In the world of Tiglath, the past couple of adventures have been focusing around a farmhouse or I guess it would be a fisherman's house. Um, so I thought I would draw this up using Campaign Cartographer 3. And so this is a short tutorial and example of how you would draw something like this up. Okay, I'm going to try and draw up a farmhouse that's in used in my current adventure. So we'll start. We've got campaign cartographer open and it's in a funny state, but we're going to do file uh, new and we don't care about that. And we're going to, we're going to create a dungeon, even though it's a, how, a house, we're creating a dungeon for all sense and purposes that's the with the dungeon designer and i'm using campaign cartographer three not three plus i've had some issues with three plus and i'm haven't moved to that but we'll just do a campaign cartographer three there shouldn't be that really much difference between the two of them so we decide we're going to decide our settings ourselves we're going to pick the dd3 dungeon i kind of like that one and the question is is how big do we want to make this drawing so the way I've described this room, I know that it's going to, the dungeon, the farmhouse itself is going to, um, we've got uh, a set of rooms on the second floor and on the first floor, and we've got a basement. And we also have an attic. But what happens is that we're going to um, need to figure out how big we're going to make this. And this is kind of large. We don't really need that. But let's say we're going to make it 100 feet this is the area of the map 100 feet by 80 feet that's much more than we actually need so um we're going to um just go with that for now and um oops well let's, let's put this over here so let's stop uh some shrivener popped up Oh, well, that's okay. A Shrivener is one of the, the tools uh, that I use, and I was just uh, trying to make sure that I knew that popped up again. Anyway, um, but well, I was trying to to want to make sure that I knew the name of the kit house as I get going uh, with this. So this is um, the widow Ranella. So this is Ranella. So we want to know. We want to. This is Ranella's farmhouse. So that's the reason why I was bringing up Shrivener's because I keep my notes in Shrivener. So we have Ranella's farmhouse. Where do we, now then, where do we want this title? Actually, I normally don't like the way Campaign Cartographer puts the title, but we'll use that as the name. In the bottom left, we do want, I always like to have a scale bar. So that puts, a, by clicking bottom left, and bottom right, having a compass rose, and that I kind of like that one. So we'll put the compass rose. The 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 scale bar will be in the bottom left, and the uh, compass rose will be in the bottom right. So we figure out. So we're going to be 80, 100 by 80. We do next. Uh, I want to put this on. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to put this on. We're sort of on a beach, but we'll say that we're going to put it on grassy green bitmap three. So we do next. Now then, we're going to en enable multiple levels because we're going to say we've got actually two, we're going to say three levels above ground and one level below ground. So we'll do that and we don't need a roof drawing. So we'll do, um, let's finish this and then it's going to ask me where I want to save this so um, we'll put this here in my insane um, set of uh, folders and we're going to put this into Ronell's farmhouse so that we will put it there because this is sort of a dungeon so this is there we scale it up so now we've got we have our hypertext links that will take us between the various floors and this is the first floor 
So we need to draw the basic structure of the building and we can do that with just going in and um, we can do, do a, a standard room here, which is, that's basically what we're gonna, we're gonna do. So now what do we, what do we want for the outer wall? That's fine. And for the walls, we'll do a flagstone. And for the, the floor, uh, that's good. So that gives us planks, that gives us something nice. So we can do that. The wall width initially will be one foot thick, which gives us a nice thick wall. Now, I need to go down and check the grid. And no, it always comes up with a unusual grid. So we're going to want a five foot grid with a five foot snap, which means it snaps to, to one foot. I want the cursor snap there and the grid will be five foot. So now then, as we, as I said, I want to make the farmhouse, um, approximately, um, say, uh, a nice room size is 15 by 10. So I know I'm going to make the, the, the farmhouse at least 30 feet d 30 feet wide and we'll make it um make it 50 feet 50 by 30 is a nice or 50 by 30 is a nice size so we're going to uh, pick a spot here there's that and then uh we can actually so that's 10 no okay let's escape out of there i didn't mean to do that what i wanted to do let's go back in here I, not a square, but I want a rectangular room. So I don't want a square. So let's do that. So we'll click here. So we're 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And then we draw the rooms up here. So that's, that's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So this is basically the structure of the farmhouse. It gives us a nice farmhouse, and then we finish with that. So I'm going to save this just because I'm always paranoid about making sure things are saved. So now we've got a nice farmhouse that we can zoom in a little bit on. Now, uh, we could start putting, the next thing we want to do is we want to start putting in interior walls. So we can cr actually create our rooms in here. So this is the wall structure. So we're going to say, uh, which wall do we want? Um, that there are a variety of walls already predefined, and we've added some walls. And okay, so it's cobble brown, cobble gray straight. So we'll say cobble gray straight. Let's see what that wall looks like. We can always do a wall, see if that's what it looks like. And then, eh, don't like that. So let's go back. Let's go back to the wall, the wall thing. Let's go back to walls. And okay, so we have flagstones. That was cobble. So this is flagstone straight. I think this is more what we want, but we'll confirm. That's why I always do this. There we go. That's flagstone straight. So we hit control Z and get rid of it. So this is the basic structure. This is the outer section of the room. And uh, we actually have a scene with the little dots with the um, with the where the grid is on this particular background is a little bit difficult. And what happens is we can always uh, turn the background off. So we can see now we can see the dots a little bit easier. Uh, they're still kind of hard to see. You may not be able to see them in the video. There's little dots every five feet, which are the, which is our grid which gives us some some ideas so the main wall we're going to divide the room divide the building into three major sections there's the left hand and the right hand and then the the middle so um what happens because we made this 5 10 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 50 50 50 doesn't we're going to put um uh, we're going to put a, a 20 foot and a 20 foot and a 10 foot wide section for for the for the rooms. So let's let's uh, we've got our wall. Let's click our wall, 
And we're going to say, okay, so this is snapping here. So it's one, two, that's five. That's 10, 15, 20. So we're going to put a start our wall here and go up here. And that, oh, come on. Why didn't you do that? Start our wall. Put it there. That, okay, so the, the wall, it didn't do what we expected on the wall. So let's do, this is flagstone straight. So we want to go here, try that again, there. So there puts our, that puts that wall. And then we have a second wall here. Now, in the way that this house, so I've got a 10 foot gap and I've got 20 foot rooms. Actually, we think about that, uh, that the 20 foot is a little bit wide, but that's, that's fine. So this is going to be a large master bedroom. And this is going to be, uh, we want to divide this in half. So we're going to divide this in half here, approximately. We don't have to divide exactly equal and okay so this is going to be the big master bedroom this is the for your entryway up here is uh, the kitchen and here is the dining room and what we can do to make sure that we pick there we're just gonna pick uh, Okay, so let's pick a slightly larger table. And the nice thing about cam if I turn off snap, uh, no, cancel. I just want to turn off snap. So now I can place it anywhere. I can always scale up the table. So then that's what I'm going to do is I want to scale up the table independently. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to. Um, um, make the the table um, let's let's say we're gonna make it to for, for start off let's just make it twice independently both uh, twice as large that's a little bit too large now we see that the X is fine the the Y is fine but the X is a little bit too large so we're gonna cut that back down to one five more which gives us a nice size table so we finish there and we finish with a table now let's put let's grab some chairs because we need some nice dinner chairs here and then we reset we're going to make these our normal chairs so that they're there and we can use our cursor to place them so i can place the chairs so i get three per side let's see if i can reverse that there we go three per side and put it one at the um, one at each end so there we go now let's finish it we click over here we're going to bring the table to the front oh and we crashed uh let's close the program <laughs> okay so now now we see some of the um some of the problems that we occasionally see with um campaign cartographer it um as you see that it occasionally crashes on us and there's um nothing i mean it's just you crash so you have to uh come back i'm trying to get back to where uh, I was and see if uh, that's why I tend to save frequently so we'll go back into the dungeons here and let's see so this is farmhouse 41 open and let's bring this back over here and we crashed so that just gives you an idea of why um yeah and maybe the newer version is a little bit more stable maybe it's not i'm not really particularly sure uh, about that but we can go back and we can 
quickly uh, get back to where we were because now drawing it once we've drawn it the first time drawing it the second time is actually a, a bit faster but we'll um, turn off their background so we can see some of the dots one two three that's 15 20 actually I think I'm gonna make this a little bit since I'm redrawing this I'm gonna make the center section a little bit wider I made it I'm gonna make it uh, that's 5 10 11, 12. I'll put it there so now then no, did that is that straight no it's, well you can always do crooked walls but I kind of I kind of like to have my walls uh, at least uh, a little bit straighter than there so there we go so now then now let's save this then we continue on with our wall flying staff here which is here so now we've got this and let's we can continue I'm being a little paranoid about saving right now because of because of that so now that then that this is going to be our large bedroom this one here is going to be our kitchen this is, here is going to be our dining room so let's let's do our kitchen a little bit first we're going to grab a, a stove gray and uh, if you understand that the the cursor keys can flip things around quickly for you and if we turn off snap that makes life somewhat faster so we're going to put uh, actually a couple of stoves here it gives us a little bit more um, finished and we need a table obviously we need a table in the kitchen so and we use the cursors and we put the table here and then I'm going to need some cupboards uh, here. So let's put a couple of cupboards here, there. And the one other thing we do need, because this is a, uh, you have to remember this is not, we don't have indoor plumbing, so we want a barrel because we're gonna want to put, uh, and we'll put the barrel here and we finish it and then we do we get a quick move and we'll just grab the table here and drag the table a little bit over there and then we redraw so that gives us there's a barrel table and this automatically sort of defines where we're going to put our door because we want our standard we're going to put our standard wood door here and that's going to go right there now we want we actually sort of want the door to snap so we want that door so that puts us the door there and we see we've got our nice little kitchen finished so we finish that so um that's there i'm going to save and because i've had problems with this i'm going to uh, restart the video in just one second so let's see Okay, I use Cam Studio. I kind of like the way it works with the other things. I've had problems with the other ones, but Cam Studio has this funny limitation that if you go too long, you produce an AVI file that it can't, that you can't do anything with. I saw some things about fixing it, but the easier solution is just to stop and uh, do some more. So we've got the first part of this in here. Now, so this is the first this this is the first part of this. Now, what happens is that. We're gonna we're gonna quickly fly through a couple of things here. I want to add some other furniture into here. Uh, I want to add, as I was trying to do the first time, let's add a table. Uh, we'll switch the table here. We'll scale it by. We'll do independent x and y. So we do 1.5 and two more. So that gives us a nice table here that's a lot the wrong table so let's finish that one there's there, you have two tables so this table here that's more like what i want for, actually the the x direction is still a little bit large so we're going to make that 1.4 more it gives us a little bit more room finished finished 
and then we come back in here and we grab some chairs and we want to go and make them the same size and they're just one so we put the chairs this way so we can put one two three and we put one two three put one there and put one there finish and last time we crashed because of some reason so I'm going to save before I bring that then I'm going to bring the table to the foreground do it and now if we refresh there we've got our thing now we've got our table so we're going to need a door as uh, we're going to snap with the door and we're going to want to put our dining well actually we probably want to set double doors for our dining room table dining room. so we're finished there so now we've got our dining room so now we've got our kitchen our dining room the thing we're going to need is a staircase going up and for this one i almost invariably need to rescale the 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 stairs because oh, that's the staircase going down we want the staircase going up so we're going to put the stairs here now it's a little bit too large so uh it's 10 foot wide so we're going to make this a five foot wide stair no nope. let's do that again 0.5 so that gives us a nice stair so this is going to give us a nice foyer so we're going to put the we're going to put it here so this comes up with a nice staircase there approximately and uh finished and then we do need the doors to the house how would the what kind of door would would you you would have a little bit more if we come into the full selection of doors we'd probably want a reinforced door on and this is scale of one so we want a reinforced door here this is the door here and then we're going to want a normal door into our large bedroom and we're going to put the entrance back here and we're then going to let's think about this again let's quick move let's move our stairs down a little bit here so we now have um so now if i redraw so this is this is our entrance you come in there's a set of stairs going up you come around here's the kitchen here's the dining room and this would be the big large master bedroom so we can come over here and we can now um uh, uh read we can add some windows to this so the uh, actually i kind of like the windows with shutters uh, though sometimes they get a little bit strange in the way they um, the the shutters work because they often are point in the wrong direction and uh, so there's that and of course we have some in the kitchen give us a nice our dining room give us some nice day light in the dining room put one above each stove gives us plenty of that number and a little bit of way to see that one this one sometimes they think they this is their smart symbols which sometimes I had just have a little bit of a problem with there's there and we can put a uh, window there and there and there so now we've got all our windows so we this is a brightly lit, lit room brightly lit so we've saved so we've got um we finished that so we basically finished the first floor so this is the first floor of our uh, little farmhouse so let's save let's save this so that we have the the farmhouse there the thing that I often do when I when I create when I go to my second floor is one of the things I want to do is I want to copy my staircase so I've selected that do it and I want to put the origin 
at 0 comma 0. So that will give me a copy on the clipboard, which is kind of unusual for that. So now then, we've got this saved. Now we go to floor 2. And this goes a little strange. And actually, let's go back to floor 1. So let's save this just so it's scaled correctly. Let's go to floor 1. Let's, uh, oh, now I know why. All right. So we need to draw our farmhouse here. Let's uh, take it back. Go back to floor 2. And we're going to draw our major room here. And yes, this is the same setting. So we wanted to, and we, are we on the same grid? It, for some reason, it switches grids kind of strangely. So we're going to, um, and are we cursor snapped? Cursor snap. So we want the cursor to snap. Well, actually, let's cancel that. Let's go back to floor one. Save that. So we're one. So we're here at position um, 15 and 25. That's where you see up there. So let's go to floor two. So let's try this again. OK. So we're 15 and 25. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and we're going to make it 1, 2, so we're making, that's 15, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so let's save this, go back to floor 1, floor 2. Yes, they look pretty good. So floor two. Go back to floor one. Edit. Uh, copy. And we're going to copy the staircase. Do it. Put it at back at origin zero comma zero. Go to floor two. Edit. Paste. And we want to place it at zero comma zero. So that gives me our staircase in exactly the same place as it was down below. Now we'll probably want to change this to, uh, my argument is we'll leave this the same because this, uh, well, no we're not because there isn't a third floor normally, it's just an attic. But what happens is it tell, this gives us our guide to see how we're going to draw the next piece which is we need to draw our walls on here and we need to uh, create our rooms. So, we're going back to our wall, Flagstaff Street. So this gives us the, and we're still with a five foot, five foot snap grid. So this will help us making sure we understand where our walls are. And then, um, So, this gives us our normal room. This gives us our normal area. Now, we need to uh, draw the rooms. So what happens is we're going to uh, do something a little unusual here. There's a room. There's a room, and then I want to actually mark off a little, so there's a room there. And actually let's, we want to make the ro this room here we want to do. So there are 
three rooms. They're not exactly the same shape, but I'm going to erase. I'm going to erase this wall here because that's not exactly the way I want it. I want this little gap here, but then I want to have. Um, I want to divide this into two rooms there and a room there and then we can put our doorways here so this gives us doorway here doorway here doorway here now is this right and the doorway here here and here finished so let's see did I do this correctly so let's see so this distance from here to here is 30 feet so these are 10 foot wide rooms and um, so yeah that's okay and so yeah we're gonna have the door right here at the top this is sort of a hidden little this is going to be a secret area here so we have these rooms now we can also add our windows now because we can just put normal windows on we're on the second floor so we can put normal windows in each of the rooms that is here and uh, here and this is our sort of our entrance room here and here 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 so we have a nicely lit room so there's no um, finished it gives a slight hint that there's something going on here but we'll explore that in a bit so what happens is this gives us the our, our nicely designed room. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to change my uh, that we can uh, to figure. I can't remember what I scaled this. So if I info and I list this, I do it and it shows me that this is my image. Notice it's scaled at 0.5. So we so it's ha half size. So we're going to want to come in, and actually we want a staircase going down, but we want it at 0 0.5, 0 point, yeah, let's just do 0 0.5 more, and we want to change its direction, so this would go here, and if we place it just about, we turn the snap off, we place it just slightly offset here um, finished and now we can come in and go erase and erase that one and do it and then we redraw and there's our staircase going down so now we've got all our we've quickly drawn up our map notice that there probably is a little issue this would not be an issue because this would be de this this door here would come into here and these are smaller bedrooms and so on but what happens is that there is a slight issue with this door here but eh, hey this is at the top of the stairs but it gives us a nice area for that we also do need to we uh, had um, said that there was some sort of closet uh, up here when I did did this but um, so this actually this actually sort of makes sense here that we then can come in so let's see how wide is this we could do info distance how wide is this space here how wide are we so that is actually four foot wide okay so what we can do is we go back to our doors and we can take our door 
which is normal so yeah uh, we'll say 0. 0.6 normally doors are five foot wide in this which is a little bit wider than normal in reality but we'll and we're going to turn we're going to want to put our door here so that's there finished and then we can come back to our wall like so straight and then this gives us a nice what looks like a nice closet there and then here we actually have uh, we're going to have a ladder going down we're going to make that one so this is sort of um, a stair a hidden staircase up uh, from down below and we'll finish that so that's so this gives us our second floor and actually now we go down to our first floor and we want to save that yes and we go to our first floor here and uh, this points out a slight problem we didn't plan ahead a plan too far ahead so what happens is that we need to draw our little passageway there so what happens is we're going to need to add another flagstone straight wall and we're going to um, put our wall here to here to here and then unfortunately we put a window there which was a bad idea that was a bad idea uh, so we're going to we're going to see if we can erase the window do it but see though the 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 window is a, actually a, a, a what's called a cutter so what happens is we need to put that, that back so what happens here is if we go to our flagstone straight no we come into here and we go in we're oh, sorry um yeah we could do that we could put the here to here now let's get our wall flagstone straight there to there finished now we can edit change properties and we can do the prior item we can do that and what happens is um, I think if we change our line width to one see what happens there and that puts it back yeah we sort of patch the wall okay so now then we come back here and we grab our ladder and put our ladder here and we're finished there and so now we've got we need to add our secret passage into there but that's fine so that's close enough for now so we've saved uh, we, this is how we've quickly drawn up our thing so the idea would be is that this would this secret passage there would be an entrance from this bedroom into the secret passage which would take you up to the attic there is a stairs below here which takes you down into the basement and we can do the same thing there okay so let's uh, we've got uh, the first floor and the second floor basically done enough that we could play with them we come back out here um, we want to do a little bit of the third floor and a little bit of the basement so let's do the basement next so we'll save this we'll go to the basement here so this gives us the basement and the basement is um, we're gonna need a slightly different we're gonna want a slightly different floor so that would be the wood floor that's flagstone and let's see if we can find a nice um, Stone gray tile bitmap. Stone gray tile bitmap. Uh, paving symbol. Oh, eh, that'll work. So we have a nice paving symbol for the for, for that. We'll have the flagstone bitmap, and we'll use a the symbol there. So that will give us 
uh, we've got our flagstones. So we do this. And again, we want to make sure we're on the right grid. And it always, for some reason, it switches the wrong grid. So we're there. Are we in cursor snap? Cursor snap and turns cursor snap off too. So we, we want cursor snap on. So we have there. So now then, we want to be in 15 by 25. And we want to go over here 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And we have a problem with the, with the floor. So that didn't work out real well. But we can fix that. So what happens is that that gives us there. So we first off, we can turn off the background so we can see what we've got here. So this is this is there. And we can turn off the walls because uh, if we turn off the walls, so that means it's there. So this is so now all we've got is there. So we want to figure out what kind of fill we really want for the floor and this um, cobble bitmap so that we have the gray flagstones which is a ideally we have the stone uh, what do we want watery cobble so Cobble bitmap. Okay. So now then we can edit, change properties, and we're going to click this, and we're going to say do it, and we're going to change the fill style to cobble bitmap. So that gives us, okay. So now if we show all, thaw all, and this is our, gives us, it's close enough. It's good enough for what we're doing now. So now we save this. Now the interesting feature is we can go back to floor one. And here's our staircase again. So what we can do is we can edit, copy our staircase again, do it, set the origin at zero comma zero. Then we go to our basement and we edit and we paste and we've set the origin at zero comma zero there's our staircase going up so now then we've finished you know it says so the question comes up is what do we what kind of structure do we want in our basement again we'll use our our well let's cancel this let's zoom in a little bit here so now we've got our structure. Let's um, cancel. Let's put our let's put some walls in. We'll do flagstone straight again, and we're going to come down here. Obviously, we would put the same sort of retaining wall here. That gives us that wall there. And then what happens is that we'll just we're going to eyeball this one and put this one out here so our walls are probably going to line up close enough and um, then what happens in the basement we do we really need doors if we, if we don't really have a finished basement we can just use wall cutters which are called wall cutters and so we're going to put a five foot wall cutter here and a five foot wall cutter here and put another cutter here and another cutter here so this gives us our basement. Now in the adventure I've got here, there really isn't much going on in the basement, but this gives us our basement so that we could do some things with the basement. So this gives us our nice structure for the basement. So we zoom out here, so that gives us our, support, our supporting walls and so on. So we save our basement. Now, the interesting one is uh, we go to floor two and we want to see 
this here. So this is this little structure here is where we're sort of interested. Now this is where I normally pick up I want to write down a few things. So um, what happens is that I'm going to uh, I'm going to bring up a text editor and I'm just going to bring this over here so I can keep track of just a few things about this um, little area here that we're in. So notice here th this, uh, okay, come on, quit doing this. Right here, if we look up here at this dimension here, this is 15, approximately 15 feet, so it's 15 by 51 is the, it, it, is the actual, is that coordinate, so it's 15 by 51 15 by 51. That's the lower left. And then the upper right of this little area here, here is uh, 26 by 55. So if we come um, back to our little text editor, 26 by 55. So that's going to be our, our, our first room up in the, the attic. So I'm just going to pull this off so, I, so we can see this. Now we come back here, we zoom in, we go to floor three. So we save this, now then we zoom in. So we can actually put... Um, we can actually, let's pick our, pick our room style here. Now we're not going to want the flagstone bitmap, so we, we actually do want that back to the, what was that? Uh, wood, wood plank, horizontal, that'll be fine. And, but the top is not really wood flank because we're um, so we're going to want to have uh, wood grain. That will let's see, that's wood wood grain bitmap. It's a little bit oak. There we go. So that gives us this room here for for up on up on the roof. And what happens is. We can actually enter the coordinates down here. So our first coordinate is 15 by 51. So that's there. Our second corner, we're, we're, we know we can enter in here. So this, we know our x dimension is going to be 26 and uh, by uh, 51. That gives us this dimension there. And then our third corner is going to be the 26 by 55. So that gives us our little space up here. And if we zoom in here, and now then we're going to want to put our stairs, which goes back down. Nope. And the reason it did that is because we have snap on. We don't want snap on when we place certain objects. So that comes up to here. We finish that. Now, let's put snap back on. We're going to want to put another room. Now this is this would be at the very edge of the uh, of the attic. So we're going to zoom out just a little bit and we're going to want to put another square rectangular room here and this room here we're going to also want to snap we're going to want the five snap there we go and unfortunately the grid it always turns off the cursor snap so let's put we're going to put this here this room here comes down here and it's over here 
and we're finished. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the doors, not there, to the doors, and we need some, we need a five foot wall cutter. Because I'm not even, because this is a secret passage. So we're going to do this and we have to cut it twice because there's two walls that are sitting on top of each other finished. So this is now our secret passage. You come up the stairs from the first down uh, into into this room here. So this gives us our secret passage room. So now we've got all the rooms uh, thrown. So we scale it all out. Let's save this. And uh, so we've drawn all, we've drawn the basement, the first floor, the second floor, and the third floor. Now, we've, d we've drawn this. So one of the things that is nice, that is really nice of campaign cartographer is if we go back to our first floor here, here we are. Let's turn everything on, uh, show all. So we've got everything is turned on. So now this is there. We can now make a pretty rendition of it. So if I come into here and I activate my sheet effects, and this is dungeon three. So let's see what this does. Now, this will turn on the sheet effects. Depending upon how long the sheet, how, what the settings and a variety of things, the sheet effects can take quite a while to render. And so this one. So we see that this draws all the shadows and things like that. And one of the problems we have is that sheet effects are not quite right because the uh, if we take a look at, um, I thought it would be the walls. Yes, the walls, we have a glow, we have a bevel, and we have a wall shadow. This often is a little bit too large. This is saying the length is six and the blur radius is two, but the length I've found often you want about 2.5 to three, two, two to three. So we'll do 2.5. So we'll say, okay, okay. And this will create a slightly less shadowy structure here. So this gives us the nice this gives us a nice look so we save this now we can create this out to uh, a PNG uh, by doing that I do file save as and I select PNG bitmap now we have some options when we do this and we can bring up the options dialog and I tend to put this at a fairly high rate and the downside to this is if I do save this can take a quite a while as you're seeing here this is a rendering image pass one of six and this is not fast and I'm running on a, a 4.2 gigahertz uh, i7 six core uh, it's, it's overclocked 4.2 gigahertz so it, it's there and the interesting thing about this so let's this is the other let's bring up task manager so we can see what's actually happening here so fastcat is what this actually shows at so performance now the interesting thing here is if I click CPU oh guess what we're not taxing our CPU very much at all. We're doing 16%. But why? Because I'm not looking. So this is my process here, FastCAD. It's, um, it, it, it's, this is the task. And it's not responding, but that's okay. So it's memory, it's using, uh, it's using the performance. So if I take a look at this, if I open up my resource monitor, and I bring that over here and I take a look at the CPU and um, we take a look at the, let's see, where is it? Average CPU. So here we go, FastCAD, it's running on three threads 
uh, it's only running on three threads. And from what I've seen when I did some work with uh, the new release, it's still a single threaded, basically. Though, though it says three threads, it's really not. It's not running. It, it, I mean, it's, it's really running on one thread. If you know some of the history of Campaign Cartographer, it was written partially in assembly language. Uh, that's what FastCAD was. And uh, writing multi-threaded in assembler is an interesting challenge that not many people are up to today. Um, and so this is the this is the reason that this is even though I'm on a fairly fast c computer that um, it can take quite a while for some of this to render out, and it's because um, the system is not multi-threaded. And uh, maybe the render, because it doesn't take advantage of your graphics card, really. That's one of the, the things that uh, Campaign Cartographer will run on a fairly mundane system. And I've got not, uh, I've got a slightly above, what's the, okay, I've got a, a six core machine because I do a bunch of programming and things like that. And so I want the six cores. I've got lots of RAM, um, but it doesn't really matter with, with this. This will run on there and it won't take advantage of any of that. And it really doesn't take advantage of my graphics card. So I've got a 960 uh, uh, NVIDIA 960. So, um, it, it doesn't take advantage of the graphics card, doesn't take advantage of a bunch of features like that, which is sort of a problem. And, uh, that, so I'm going to stop this, um, or I'll, because this, this will, that when, when the image comes back up, I'm going to stop and then we'll, um, see what it looks like when we finally get it done. Okay, so it finally finished rendering, and the other thing is it says it's rendering image one of one of six or whatever, and then it finally does that. So this, it pops up the image in GIMP because that's what I've got set up on GIMP. So now we can do we can zoom in on uh, if we come in with GIMP, we can zoom in on any piece of this, and it actually is fairly nice detail with all of this. It, it generates a very nice image. I really like the end result. It's just that it's not consistent in time. Um, it could be done, and it doesn't take, really take advantage of modern hardware and so on. And uh, so this gives me uh, my fi this gives me the final image for that. Uh, if we take a look at the image properties. We notice that this is uh, uh, 3,670 by 2,943 pixels. It's actually a, it's a 72 DPI. It's a fairly large, um, relatively high resolution graphic, which is what I kind of like. So that one did that one for that layer, and I could do the others. But that gives you an idea of how you could draw some stuff up with Campaign Cartographer. I am not the, I've used it for a long time, for many years, and it gets me where I want to be. But uh, there are other options if you uh, want to take a look at them. But this is, um, I thought I'd drop a quick little um, uh, farmhouse that is part of my campaign that I'm running on right now. And so you can see how that works. After I finished this video, I suddenly realized when I ran the campaign that I'd forgot an important feature of the house, which is not really that important to it, as far as the maps go, which was a widow's walk. Because this was a fisherman's home and the widow that owned it, uh, she had a walk where you could go up and basically on the roof and you could walk out to see uh, if you're uh, the fisherman was coming home with his catch. Uh, interesting feature called a widow's walk. I've only seen a, I've personally, I've only seen a couple of homes with them, but I left this out of this, uh, actual, uh, example, but uh, you understand that it would be fairly easy to add. If you like my video, press the thumbs up button. I'd appreciate that. Or if, uh, this interests you, you can always subscribe to my channel. There's a button right above. 
Uh, I look forward to hearing some comments. Tell me what you think about this and I'll uh, uh, try and reply and uh, we can see if I'll do some more of these. Thank you.